I call on Professor Gregor Kennedy, Pro Vice-Chancellor Teaching and Learning, to introduce Associate Professor Natalie Hannan, who's kindly agreed to deliver the occasional address. Chancellor. Today the University welcomes Associate Professor Natalie Hannan as guest speaker. Natalie leads the Therapeutics Discovery and Vascular Function Group within the Translational Obstetrics Group at Mercy Hospital for Women at the University of Melbourne. She is passionate about developing new approaches to combat major complications of pregnancy, especially preeclampsia. Natalie's research is focused on developing therapeutic strategies that are safe in pregnancy and novel approaches to developing and delivering therapies directly to the placenta. Her preclinical research has led to a number of clinical trials, both internationally and nationally. Natalie has a strong research profile with over 80 peer-reviewed publications in international journals. She is well known for her passion to communicate research to the public. As Associate Dean for Diversity and Inclusion and Vesky, a Vesky Inspiring Women Fellow, Natalie is a staunch ambassador for women in STEM and believes strongly in a diverse and discrimination-free workplace where gender, sexuality, sexual orientation, disability and background should not be a barrier to individuals reaching their full potential. Please join me in welcoming Natalie Hannan. Thank you so much. Firstly, I would like to start by acknowledging that we are on the lands of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation, who have been custodians of these lands for thousands of years. I wish to take this opportunity to acknowledge and pay our respects to their elders, past, present and emerging, and all Aboriginal people here today. Chancellor, Vice-Chancellor, Deans, members of the faculty, distinguished guests, and importantly, our graduates and their families here today, welcome. Thank you, Pro Vice-Chancellor, Professor Gregor Kennedy, for your kind introduction. I would like to express my sincere gratitude for being invited to give the occasional address today. It has been 11 years and 13 days since I sat there where you are today, eagerly anticipating my own graduation from my own PhD. And what an honour it is for me to not only witness your graduation, but to deliver the occasional address. I feel so very privileged. This moment, your graduation, is such an important celebration of all of your hard work. It is a significant milestone and an, a momentous achievement, and I congratulate you all, each and every one of you. But in truth, this ceremony is not only for our graduates today, this moment is also for their families, their loved ones, their friends, and their supporters. The completion of your degree marks a great personal accomplishment. And that accomplishment is shared by the people who stood by you and who contributed to your success in various ways. And I encourage you all to reflect on that support and on this incredibly important but not always easy journey. Likewise, this ceremony is important to the teachers and supervisors and mentors who espoused, encouraged and sponsored you th throughout your degree. And I speak on behalf of all of them when I wish you well in the next stages of your chosen career path. As you leave here today, you leave as our newest freshly minted graduates, our esteemed ambassadors, and we trust you will continue to embody the faculty's values of collaboration and teamwork, compassion, respect, integrity and accountability in your exciting careers going forward. Many of you will be familiar with the Charles Dickens story, A Christmas Carol, 
And given the season, I thought I may draw on the inspiration, that is, of the three ghosts who came to visit Ebenezer Scrooge, the ghosts of past, present, and yet to come. If I may start with that of the past, for many of you, this day is a welcome relief. You may feel as though you're finally here after dreaming of this moment for so long. But for many of you, if like me, you may feel as though you can't actually believe you are here today. I remember sitting there thinking, how did I actually get here? Obviously through hard work, courage and determination, but that is not what I mean. It certainly never seemed to be written in the stars for me. While I indeed grew up always wanting more from myself and more from my life, the reality was I was one of six children from a single parent family and we were poor. Thankfully my mum and my older sisters provided love and a strong work ethic and perhaps that is how I managed to get through <clears throat> to that day to graduate just like you are now. It's re remarkable what passion, encouragement and love can do. I remember when I submitted my PhD thesis, my mum swelled with pride and tears. And while I think she always believed in me and believed I could do anything, even she surely thought for that moment, how did she get there despite those odds? Because the sad truth is she never thought that she was worth anything, never enough to do anything meaningful, just a mother. And this broke my heart to think how someone can't see their own worth, especially someone who meant the world to me. In my acknowledgements, in my PhD thesis, I wrote, thank you, mum, my number one fan, for all of your love and pride and for what you have given me. So much of this is for you. And it truly was. I recently had the privilege of hearing from the amazing feminist, journalist and social political activist, Gloria Steinem. And she described a similar moment where she had the realisation that she was living the unlived life of her mother. And it's incredible to think about the varied backgrounds of the 500 plus graduands that we have here today. You too may be living the unlived life of your mother or father or a grandparent or someone very important to you and you may not even realise and how important that is. If I may now draw on inspiration from the ghost of the present, there is also another life that you may not have thought of yet, but that your graduation today is imperative. This other life you may have great impact on, or you may even save. Yesterday marks eight years to the day that my beautiful son was taken from my arms by incredible surgeons at the Royal Children's Hospital, less than three kilometres from where we are today. Sadly, my son was born with a deadly heart defect and the plumbing of his heart was back to front and his little heart couldn't sustain life as it was. Incredibly, the surgery that would save my son's life was only developed 25 years before. Countless scientific and medical specialists had experimented, trialled and thought about the best way to overcome this heart defect. And it is mind-blowing to think that our graduates sitting here join in these noble pursuits today with the incredible potential to have great impact, allowing those like my son to sit here with us today. And lastly, now, I want to draw on the ghost of what is yet to come in my final message to you all, our valued, our valued graduates today. You are the leaders of tomorrow. This is both an exciting and important responsibility. As our future leaders, in addition to your pursuit of excellence in your future careers, it is also up to you to improve, improve this world embracing and celebrating diversity, working towards a discrimination-free environment where a person's gender, culture, religion, disability or health issues, sexual orientation or sexuality should not be a barrier to them reaching their full potential and having impact in our world, a world where equality and excellence go hand in hand. 
I implore you to do everything in your power to ensure that it is a true reality of the future. I wish you all success as you go forward today in your chosen pursuits. Enjoy this moment and the celebrations that may continue. This is your moment and you deserve this and all that is yet to come. Thank you so much. On your behalf, ladies and gentlemen, I thank Associate Professor Hannan for addressing us this morning.